This is still one of the best Android TV experience I ever tried. And the fact that it runs natively on a PC or even straight from a USB drive makes it even more amazing. You can stream, you can play games, even Xbox Game Pass works here. But here's the question. Why build something like this when you could just buy a Fire Stick or a Chromecast that's a plug and play? Especially Black Friday and Christmas deals around the corner? Well, let's find out. What's going on everybody? It's Badger the are back here again. And today we're taking a second look at this Android TV 14 build to see how well it holds up and what you can actually do with it. Quick note before we start, this isn't my build. All credit goes to the original developers who made this possible. I'll leave their links and full setup info down below in the pinned comment. For this setup, I'm using a Lenovo M910Q Tiny PC. It's running an Intel Core i5-7500T, 16 gigs of RAM and integrated graphics. Nothing fancy, pretty old hardware actually, but that's actually the point. We're taking something that might be collecting dust and giving it a whole new life. If you're enjoying this kind of DIY project, make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing. More builds like this are coming soon. Once installed, this is the Android TV 14 experience. If you want to see the full installation process step by step, check out my previous video. I'll link it below. For navigation, you can use an air mouse, a wireless mini keyboard like this one with the RGB lightning, or even a Fire Stick remote from an old device. All of them were great and trust me, that mini keyboard is a game changer for typing and full control. In settings, about, you'll see we're running Android TV 14. With around 63 gigs of usable space, plenty for your favorite apps. And while we are here, Let's unlock developer options. Scroll down to Android TV OS build and tap it a few times until you see the message. Simple. And if you want to use your Fire Stick remote, just go into Settings, Remotes and Accessories, hold down the Home button on, on your Fire Stick for about 10 to 15 seconds, and it will pop up for pairing. Navigation and volume control work perfectly fine. And here's the mini keyboard. You can change its color with Fn and F2. Or just hold the Fn key and swipe to change out the colors. Super handy little gadget. Now, mousepad works great on this one, as you can see, and even on the air mouse remote. They are really, really interesting remotes. And if you don't like the default launcher, you can easily switch to something like Project Ivy straight from Play Store. It gives you a setup, a cleaner and more modern feel. Perfect if you're going for that custom living room experience. Mm -hmm. 
Now, apps like uh, YouTube. Downloader. Or Jellyfin run perfectly fine. And if you're using your own media server, it's flawless. But here is one important thing to know. This build only supports WeDivine L3 DRM. So services like Netflix or Prime Video will play at a lower quality. However, for local media or your own servers though, no problem at all. One thing that really surprised me, Xbox Cloud Gaming actually works here. It might take a moment to detect your controller, but it's playable. I tried Prince of Persia. And I also try a bit of Forza. Both run smoothly, I can say. And as for Android games, no issues here either. Asphalt 8 and some smaller indie titles work great. So, why would you go through the effort of building your own Android TV box instead of buying one? Well, the answer is simple here. It's all about recycling, customization and fun. You bring a new life to all the hardware and learning along the way. I mean, it's not perfect, but that's what makes it a DOI project. You build it, tweak it and make it your own. If you watch this far, I want to say you're a star. Don't forget to drop a like, leave a comment telling me you'd save an old PC with this build and of course, subscribe if you haven't already. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next one. Badger out.